This is going to be one of my winter projects. This is a fairly rare Stromberg Carlson 3 dialer. This was their first radio. And it's going to need well, quite a bit of work. Let's see, I'll set this camera down and we'll take a look at how I found it on the inside. The instructions are inside the lid as you can see and there's going to need to be a little bit of work on the cabinet. You can see that that is broken. The whole back is loose. And this is how I bought the thing. And that tube of course is not supposed to be in the center but I'm just showing the original state how I bought it. And this tube socket here is empty. This one has got a tube in it and this bag's got a couple of tubes in it. Those right there are audio transformers. And there's the rest of the sockets. Interesting pin connection. I'm going to take this out of the cabinet and take some still pictures so I can get a much better idea of the condition of this radio. I found some loose wires underneath the radio. I have no idea what that's about. There's no telling. I hope uh, not too many people worked on this thing. There's the plaque. Well, we'll take it apart and see what we got. Well, three weeks went by because of three stubborn screws. So I couldn't get the radio out of its cabinet, so I took it over to Russ's place because he's got more tools than Sears does. And I was pretty confident that he'd be able to loosened the screws so I could get the radio out of the cabinet, which he did. And as you can see here, I did tell him that it was very dirty because I saw no reason to reconstitute mouse pee until I had to. But underneath the radio, it's actually in pretty decent condition. As you can see, as this scrolls up, here's a closer look at uh, capacitor. And also at the top, you can see a very interesting construction for the tube socket. I've never seen tube sockets like this before. Note the wiring. It's uh, square rods soldered together. That's very early uh, construction there. And here's another shot of the tube socket and some other components and the rheostats. They look like they're in very good condition. So I'm hoping that after a good thorough cleanup and replacing a few parts, mainly that large capacitor, I'll get this radio working. Anyway, it's going to be a very nice winter project. Thanks for watching.